Welcome to PGA Tour 2K23. My name's John McCarthy, and I am packing all the golf lessons. So I invite you to use these lessons to get you swinging that club like a pro and getting that little white ball around the course as best you can. Let's crack into it. Pull back on the swing stick to start your swing when your golfer is at the top of their backswing. Press the swing stick forward to finish the swing. Give it a try. That was well done. After each shot, you will get feedback about your accuracy in the bottom right-hand corner. In the middle of that circle, there's a white stripe. And you need to keep your swing within that white stripe if you want your shot to be accurate. Now let's try another swing and remember to keep it within that white stripe. Nice work. And you're also going to receive feedback on your swing timing. And that's the meter that kind of wraps around the top of your swing accuracy indicator. Your backswing timing refers to the point at which you transition from backswing into downswing. If you do this too early, you're going to reduce the power of your shot. Good job. That's what we're looking for. Congratulations. You've got the basics down pat. In this lesson, we're going to talk about one of the most important skills you can have at your disposal, and that is putting. Now to begin your putt, pull back on the swing stick. The farther you pull back, the stronger your putt will be. The back swing meter at the bottom of your screen is going to give you a target for where your strength should be. Now as you pull back, you want to wait until the indicator gets in that. Good job on that one. The putt weight is how hard you hit your putt. To set your putt weight, move the aim marker with the aim stick towards or away from you. The further away from you the marker is, the stronger your putt will be. Since this is a little bit downhill, you'll want to ease up on the weight, so move that aim marker a little bit close. That's what we're looking for. Those moving dots on the grid are telling us that your putt's gonna break a little bit to the right, so you will have to aim to the left to compensate. Use the aim stick to make adjustments before putting so that you can drop this one in the hole. Give it a go. Hmm, not, not quite there, is it? Let's try again. Well, that didn't quite pan out. Let's uh, give that another go. Hmm, let's uh, just go ahead and give that another try.
And let's just go ahead and try that again, okay? That's the stuff. And with that, you are ready to... Hello and welcome to this lesson on clubs and shot types. We're going to dig through that golf bag a little bit, and I'll tell you a few simple tricks you can use to navigate some of the situations you find yourself in on the course. Okay, so for this shot, you're hitting into the wind. This means you are going to have to club up, or in other words, use a longer club. So let's press the change club button until you get to the pitching wedge, then just pop this shot onto the green. Well done on that lesson. Now it's only a matter of time before you find yourself in a situation where the normal shot type is just not going to do. Now to get on the green from here, you are going to need a chip shot. So let's press the change shot type button until you get to the chip shot and then chip that ball nice and close to the pin with your next stroke. Uh, not quite. Let's try that one again. Not quite. Uh, let's reset. Try again. All right, that didn't pan out. Let's give it another go. Well, no need to linger on this lesson. Information about the current lie of your ball is available always in the top right corner of the screen. This will give you a range of how much spin and power your shot will retain, and then you can use that info to adjust your shot accordingly. For this particular situation, let's change our club to the sand wedge, and then change our shot type to a splash shot, which is a great shot for getting out of these greenside bunkers. After that, give that swing a go. See if you can stick it close. Well, you've got the hang of this one. And now that you know a thing or two. Hello there and welcome to the lesson on advanced shots. In this lesson, we're gonna learn about techniques you're gonna to wanna to master if you want to compete with the pros. In this situation, we are going to need to take a partial swing. If you chip this with full power, it's going to blow right by the hole. So we are going to have to move our aim marker closer to us to compensate. Move the aim marker a little bit closer to you. See if you can get about a 75% power chip. And then use the back swing meter at the bottom of your screen to dial in the proper strength for this chip. Great work, looks like you've got the hang of that. You're gonna come across situations like this one where you want to adjust the spin 
and loft of your shot. In this case, we want to land our shot on the green softly without a whole lot of roll. And for that, we need to add some backspin. Hold down the true shot button and move your aim stick down to increase your loft and backspin. And then have a go at this pin and see if you can land it nice and soft and close. Hmm, that uh, should probably be tried again. Uh, didn't quite get that. Let's try that one again. Well, not quite. Let's try that again. Hmm, not quite. Let's try that again. Uh, how about we try that again? We'll chalk that one up as a success. Applying a fade or draw to your golf shot is a great tool to have at your disposal. By holding down the true shot button and moving the aim stick to the left, you can apply a fade. By moving the aim stick right, you can apply a draw to the ball flight. To complete this lesson, apply a fade to your next shot and watch that ball curl gently back into the middle of the driving range. Well, you've got that one down. This is the end of the advanced shots tutorial. If you want to get even more advanced, you can always go to the profile menu and tweak your club selection in your golf bag. Either way, it's going to take a lot of practice to get used to these advanced techniques. And I can't wait to see how your career progresses as you explore the game. Okay, this is where we part ways and all that's left for you is to choose a difficulty level and then you can go ahead and customize your golfer in the My Player menu if you feel like it. If not, all good as well. We'll see you out there on the links real soon.
2K Sports and the Corn Ferry Tour are proud to bring you this year's Q School Final. It's time to get underway, so let's get into the coverage of this exciting event. Luke Elby here alongside Rich Beam. And Rich, what's on the minds of these players today? Look, at the end of the day, these players want one thing and one thing only, and that's their Corn Ferry Tour card. And to do that, they need to finish up in the top 50 at the end of the event. It's all set up to be a beauty. Let's see how it unfolds. Oh, that's piped. That's heading down the runway. Second shot here on the first. Oh, that one had eyes for the flag the whole way. What an opportunity to make a birdie. Getting off to a great start at this event. Can't birdie them all unless you birdie the first, Luke. Good start. He's currently tied for second. Let's see what happens here on the second hole. Players want to take out any club, driver three, whatever it takes to miss the bunkers down the right-hand side in order to give them the best opportunity to knock it on in two. However, danger lurks everywhere around this green, so players playing cautiously might want to consider laying up. Birdie fours are always a good score to this hole, and you're never disappointed with a five. Game of the seven. And here we are with the third shot. This one is heading to a really not so good space. That's going to fall in the water, sadly. This is their fifth shot. That's a good looking shot there. Five feet coming up to the cup. Yeah, putting for bogey here. Yeah, you'll take that. And a little slide down the standings after that hole. And now on the tee, coming off a bogey, trying to reclaim some momentum. A split green here. It is difficult to make birdie twos, but par threes should be had. And he's safely on the green. Outside chance here for the birdie. Setting up here with a very long putt. That'll sting a bit. Par putt coming up here. Yeah, well hold. Let's move on to the next. So no movement on the leaderboard, remaining at even overall. The fourth at TPC Boston Rich, a great short par four. Players looking to make birdie or better. The only difficulty is finding that front bunker. That's when big numbers can be had. For sure, birdies galore. Oh, 
Oh, my. Well, that was the number, no doubt about that. Hold this putt and a chance for second place. Okay, steady now. And this putt to move into second spot on the leaderboard, or at least a share of it. In she goes. Let's head to the next. Our current leader is enjoying a two-stroke lead. This has to be one of the more difficult holes in golf. The long par four. Dog legs from right to left. The big danger here is the green. Three different tiers on this green. Find the correct one. You'll have a birdie opportunity. Miss it, and it's going to be a difficult two putt. Not bad. And what are we looking at here, Henny? Sitting up here from about 170 yards. Going with the six iron here. Good sounding strike, that one. That's well played. Anything on the green from there was fine. What's in front of them, Henny, with this part? Setting up this part 14 feet from the cup. Surely it's going to. Super shot that, and that will take him to one under. Managing to maintain their position on the leaderboard. And coming off the birdie, they'll be proud of themselves, a chance to keep it rolling. Bunkers down the right-hand side are a nuisance. The pawn fronting the left part of the green should not come into play if players find the fairway off their tee shots. Second shot to a very flat green. You can get it close, but still difficult on this long par four. The sixth hole, particularly the approach, Rich, at TPC Boston is a very strong one. If they put the pin other than front left near the water, it's a good birdie opportunity. But once that pin sneaks over to the left-hand side, watch out. Bogies and doubles come into the equation very quickly. Well, I hope he makes this one. It's for par. No, that's too bad. Four feet to the cup. This will be a good bogey. That gets the job done. Trailing by a couple of strokes now. Oh, I like this. The cover's coming off the big dog. Time to let it loose. Par five, and only the long players can reach in two. Find the fairway, and then make a decision. Do I go over the large bunker 100 yards away, or do I lay back of it? Either way, you must make a par five here because birdies will be had by the big hitters. Rich, being a big Boston sports fan, love being here in Beantown. And look, TPC Boston's a great venue for any championship. We've had some great winners here in the past, the likes of Tiger Woods, Ricky Fowler, Justin Thomas. Uh, this golf course, it gives, but it also takes. Look at the list of winners you just mentioned. What do they have in common? A, they're really gritty competitors, but B, they're super good, reliable ball strikers. I think that this golf course is sneaky, demanding. Whoever wins this week is certainly going to earn it on this relatively seemingly benign, but sneaky hard golf course. That's a good way to bounce back from the drop shot at the last hole. And with it, he moves to one under par. He's currently sitting in second.
let's see what happens here at the eighth. Par three and a diabolical green to say the least. The left-hand side sits much higher than the right-hand side and the green is usually very firm. A tough ask. That one should find the surface. Luke, that did not end up where you said it was going to. It's in the rough. Getting ready to play their third. Currently a shot off the lead. 12 feet to the cup coming up. Oh, gee, that line was looking good, wasn't it? Just a short putt remaining here. Currently at plus one for the day. And moving down the leaderboard as well. Teeing off here at the ninth hole. Ninth hole, bunkers down the left, will not come into play. And this green sits below the players on their second shot. We have seen birdies made here in the past, but they are really difficult to come by. Come on, sit. Yeah, that one will play. And this putt is for birdie three on the scorecard. Oh, just missed. This putt just five feet away from the hole. That was a gallant attempt. This next putt is for bogey. Well, that hole's behind us. More to play. And as we head over to the 10th hole, Rich, this player will enter their final nine holes of Q School. How will they be feeling? Well, right now they should be pleased. They're playing awfully well. They've put themselves in good position to get their Corn Ferry Tour card. But let's face it, nine holes left, pressure packed to say the least. Looks like this one's heading safely for the fairway. Playing from around 110 yards out. Four strokes off the lead. Going with the 9-iron, I think. Oh, what a shot. You'll take that. A chance to move into the top five on the leaderboard. A good putt to make. Nicely played. Moving on up the leaderboard now after that hole. Managing to chase down the leaders. Closing that gap. Gotta like it. Here we are in front of a par three. Par three measures 231 yards from the back. A very difficult test indeed. A long green that is unforgiving as it slopes from back to front quite severely birdies are hard to run by as pars can be as well they're yeah, not a bad shot that one trying to get to even par with this putt this for back-to-back -back birdies The old hammer hands putt. What are we looking at for this putt, Henny? Yeah, they've left it in the perfect spot here, just below the hole. They can be aggressive up the hill. Oh, wonderful effort. Confirms the par. Our current leader is enjoying a one shot lead. Let's see what happens here at the 12th. Par four, 510 yards. It is a brute. Those bunkers down the right-hand side are a natural attraction for wayward golf balls. Second shot is down the slope. A big, deep, gaping bunker on the right-hand side will also find its fair share of golf balls. All in all, just a tough hole, to say the least. 
playing from around 210 yards here. Three shots off the lead. Going with the hybrid. Not a bad approach. Grab the putter from the caddy. You're dancing. They're lining up the birdie putt here. Ooh, right by the hole. Just a tiny putt is all that remains. Now three strokes back after that hole. Teeing off here on the 13th hole. Tee shot up the hill to a blind landing area. Second shot is to a green that is surrounded by a cavern of bunkers. If you miss all those and find the green in two, then you'll have a decent look at a birdie three. This should play. A wonderful shot. A chance for birdie here on the 13th. Oh, this would be a good putt to make. And with it, a share of third spot. Oh, so close. An opportunity to make their par. Sitting at one over for the day. Time to face a par four now. Fairway sweeps from right to left down the hill. Should you find the fairway, you'll have a decent look at finding the green in two. But I've got to say, it is a difficult par four, and you'd be happy to walk away with that score. Looks to be going with a hybrid here. This one needs to kick left. Wow, what happened there? And this from the greenside rough. Eight feet to the cup. An important par save. Oh, that's frustrating. And the putt drops, and we're moving on. He's currently tied for 10th. Unfortunately, backing up slowly but surely on that leaderboard, Luke. And on the tee now, coming off the bogey. Might have a bit of a sting in the tail, I'd imagine. Par four, and a fun little par four at that. Just 421 yards from the back. Fairly generous fairway, but a green that can provide some entertainment as there's some different swales in the green, and your golf ball can go a-wandering if you're not careful. Well, it's fair to say that that approach didn't hit the mark. Missing it short there, they will definitely be upset. Just nine feet remaining to the hole. This is what they have left for par here. Ouch, that hurts. And this one is for bogey. And down it goes for consecutive bogeys. And yeah, making one bad mistake with another, compounding it, not good. The leader now has a one-stroke advantage. We find ourselves on a par three here. Watch out for this green. There's a large shelf on the right-hand side. If it's up there, good luck getting it close. And whatever you do, don't be silly and hit it left in the water. That's just a bad shot. And this part to move into the top ten. And racking up their fifth birdie of the day. And he'll move into the top ten. Now four back after that hole. looking to ride the momentum after coming off a birdie here with this shot dog leg from right to left second shot is down the slope lots of bunkers on this hole but should you avoid them and find this sliver of a green then birdie will be on your mind
Well, Rich, the 17th hole at TPC Bolston, I think the most important thing is positioning your tee shot so you can get a clear look at the green here. A very narrow green actually bisected in two by Santa Claus's belly, thus the size of it. Find the right level, you have a birdie opportunity. Nine feet to the cup. Looking for another birdie here. And with that putt hold, it's back-to-back -back birdies. Kind of like it. Two in a row. Sitting at one over for the event. And after that good play, moving up the leaderboard. Of all the finishing holes on the PGO Tour, Rich, there's plenty that feel the TPC Bolster could be right up with the very best of them. Long hitters are looking to take it down the left-hand side and get the extra chase on the golf ball down the slope. That'll leave them with a very short second shot to a dangerous green, big deep bunker right, and a large hollow on the left-hand side. Birdies and eagles have been made before, but so have sixes and sevens. That wasn't their best approach, Bima. Not taking enough club to get it there. Playing their fifth shot. Three behind our leader. Sitting at one over. Tied for sixth position. Here's their seventh shot. Three strokes off the lead. Ooh, that almost went down. This putt for a final score of 75. Nice line. Was that a good line? Mm, no one likes to put a quad on the card. Let's make this. And with that, this player will finish the Q School final and gain a ticket to the Corn Ferry Tour next season. Congratulations to them. Rich and I will certainly be following their career with great interest. Absolutely, Luke. They have locked down their Corn Ferry Tour card. Keep your eye on this player. They're going places. Well, on behalf of myself, Rich Beam, and all the hardworking folks at HB Studios, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.